Okay, so as you see on my screen, the topic for today is first hop redundancy protocol. Uh, we also call it as FHRP. Now, what is FHRP? Okay, or or why do we need a first hop redundancy protocol in the network? Uh, most of us know that a single standalone network design is not preferable. That means, let's say if I have a router, a single router connected to a single switch, a single switch connected to multiple users. Let's say this is a, a bad example of a network design. Okay, these, these many users are dependent on only single path to reach internet. Now, let's say if a router goes down, so basically you are the users are losing the reachability similar way let's say if one of the link goes down now in that way also users are going to lose the reachability that that creates bad impact on the network production okay so what we do is we try to have redundancy in the network so the redundancy don't always deal with the box or with the software or with the cable okay it is for every every single standalone point so let's say from this user point of view if he this user is connected to another switch or or if this computer is connected to a switch uh, stand, on a standalone now what if this cable was down or what if this uh, this port was down right so the best practice is have one more switch okay which act as a backup for this particular switch so i i would write it as active here and i would have i, I will write here as a standby device now, now this is always active but in case of any outage this takes up the active role similar way let's say when i have two switches let's say i connect them in this way okay even if one link goes down at certain point of uh, time, we have the second connection up with the router. Now there is a drawback here, keeping one single standalone router. So I would like to keep two devices, okay? And these will be connected to this router as well. And this router will be connected to either this ISP or might be this is connected to another ISP. So we have two pair of routers. Now, similar way, let's say I have two pair of router. This is connected to two different switches. Okay, all have their redundancy path. Let's say this is also in this way. Now, let's say we connect both the router to one single ISP. Now, what if the ISP was down? Let's say the ISP which is providing us internet might be somewhere the uh, somewhere due to some fiber cut, the internet is down from this particular ISP. So let's give it as AT&T for an example. So how do we provide redundancy or a fault tolerance at this point? So I would prefer having second backup ISP. So let's say this is my primary ISP, this is my secondary ISP. So my second router, I can point it to the second ISP. Now, even if one ISP goes down, I have the second ISP. So if you see from point, from the core point of view till access, we have the redundancy. Uh, so redundancy don't always need to be a box. It can be regards to the interface, software, uh, computers, the ISPs, it can be anything, okay? And as per the technology, we have given various name to define redundancy. Say, for example, we call redundancy, we call failover, we call high availability, clustering, ride, fault tolerance, stack-wise, VSS. Now, they are all redundancy, okay? But as per the technology, the names are been little different than one other okay so where do we have the redundancy when i have two devices okay if one goes down and one have to serve the traffic in especially in the case of a switch 
okay uh, in a case of switch or in case of link we call it as redundancy now what is failover failover is when you have two isps if the primary isp goes down you still have the connection with the isp2 now that is failover okay where is the term high availability used it is used specially in the firewall scenarios the concept is very same you will have two firewall one firewall acting as a active box second one acting as a standby box now all of sudden if the active box or a active firewall goes down you will still have the standby box okay so in this case we call it as high availability what is clustering so basically you will have a logical clustering where you will place multiple devices it can be a say firewall especially we use it for a firewalls or a, a higher end devices or a, a load balancer so let's say i have multiple a say firewall which are connected okay and now they form one cluster even if one box goes down we have the other boxes acting as a redundancy now what is ride ride is used in case of storage point okay uh, especially with respect to the tapes storage tapes or a servers so in case of storage devices we make use of tape now if the primary tape goes down then where will you be taking the backup on that day so you will have one more tape which is acting as a backup right where is fault tolerance so fault tolerance is the same thing it's regards to the isp let's say i have two isp and for some reason one isp goes down we still have the second isp running where is the term stack wise used it's used in catalyst 3750 switches and what 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 is this so let's say i have 3 3750 three switches of 3750 so i am going to connect them via cables okay now what is the benefit i will have one control plane and i have like let's say each one of them is 24 port so 24 plus 24 plus 24 so many of data planes active okay one control plane control plane is going to make the decision where to route the packet where to switch the packet and data plane is nothing but the switch port so all the switch ports are active it doesn't mean that only only let's say if this is a control plane so only the switch port of this will be active and rest will be just acting as a redundancy or uh, will be in a ideal it's not the case in this case all the data planes will be active so this is a latest technology okay even even we have high availability in active and active mode but again that is on the higher devices if you talk about lower devices they are with active and standby concept so you have two asa firewall one will be serving one will be standby if this goes down the standby comes up okay so that is one kind of high availability second high availability is when both of them are acting as active some traffic are moving forward from this uh, box the sec uh, the the few other traffic are moving out of this so they are also acting as a redundancy only okay because let's say if the traffic which are moving out of this what if this goes down so those traffic will also fall back to this the the backup will be created on this okay we make use of active and active for sake of load balancing otherwise what happens in enterprise one device will be always down uh, standby and one will be serving the packet so on a higher node we try to achieve redundancy along with load balance that makes more sense in a net, uh, in a enterprise right similar way vss is a concept where which is used in catalyst 6500 switches where we have two devices i connect a link between them which is called as vsl virtual switch link and they act as a single box now okay so there will be one control plane and let's say this is a 48 port and this is a 48 port so total 48 plus 48 ports are going to be the data plane so this term is used in 6500 and stack is used in 3750 catalyst okay so 
all these terms that we just discussed are nothing but redundancy okay redundancy in in simple way is nothing but you are giving a backup to your traffic okay you are just increasing your potential or your uh, uptime so this would be better word right so what is the uptime of your network or what is the uptime of your uh, enterprise so ever you encountered any issues regards to vpn down or someone telling that switch is down so my work is uh, been compromised i am not able to log in so those creates a production issue those are a production issue a bad network is something which no one re uh, wants on their enterprise right so what we prefer is we try to keep a redundancy now this particular concept fhrp this deals with lan specially in the case of lan okay and why do we call first hop redundancy is let's say i have multiple users multiple computer users okay so where are their uh, gateways been created their gateways let's say it's created on these routers and how is this router going to connect router is going to connect it to a switch and then switch is going to connect to multiple computers okay let's say these are pc users and this is a gateway now why do i need two gateways so let's say this is a part of vlan 1 so i have vlan 1 gateway here i'm calling it as gateway okay so both are acting as a gateway so i have vlan 2 i have vlan 3 i have vlan 4 so all of the gateways are created here now let's say they want to go to internet so their traffic will come to the switch switch will send to the gateway and gateway will send it further so let's say i have isp here so traffic will go in this direction now let's assume for some reason this is down this link is down so don't you think your user will not have access or will, he will also gradually use uh, gradually lose the connection so in order to avoid such scenario we are making use of the second gateway because this path is still valid so his traffic will now move on from this way now that is why this keyword or this name was been coined it says first hop redundancy protocol now from this device point of view which are the first hop these are the first hop and you are providing the backup or what do you say redundancy between these two gateways if this goes down you have this if this goes down you have this one okay first hop redundancy protocol now how can we achieve this okay to achieve that we need to enable some technologies okay now there are three technologies that we can make use of one is called as hsrp second one is called as vrrp and the third one is called as glbp okay now each one has its own plus and minus each one have uh, their own benefits or i i in a short i i would like to say that hsr uh, p is a cisco proprietary that means if they are all cisco devices then you can make use of hsrp in in other way vrrp is a open standard okay it's a open standard so now now you will be a uh, little bit comfortable that uh, where is vrrp used and where are, where is hsrp used right now when these two are available why do we need one more protocol to achieve the first hop redundancy why do we need this the reason is both this protocol hsrp and vrrp they work on active and standby model that means whenever you have hsrp and vrrp configured one device is going to serve the traffic okay and the other device is just idle in the idle once the uh, once the active device goes down for some reason now the traffic will move on from the standby okay the standby standby will get converted to active now let's say active comes up if active comes up this is again going back to idle and the active will take the traffic now each and every time when you have these two 
protocols running it's in a active and standby model so only one device is accountable for your traffic the other one is just sitting idle so in order to achieve load balancing we have a third protocol which is called as glbp okay just a second okay so in the case of glbp what happens both the devices are serving the traffic okay and how is how is it serving the traffic we will do a lab and we will prove that prove the traffic flow okay so for today i will cover the first two that is hsrp and vrrp and in the next class i'll go with GLF, glbp my intention was to cover all the three uh, but the problem is we have a lot of detailed things in hsrp and vrrp okay and might be you may not have seen uh, heard about some topics yet so after the class you are going to learn a lot of new things about hsrp and vrrp okay so that is why i don't want to include gl glbp here and just mess the class with so so many so much of topics okay fine so let's quickly check this fhrp uh, concepts and then we will be moving further okay so let me just walk through this points so as i told you these are the keywords used for different type of redundancy okay in case of a server in case of firewall in case of isps in case of a uh, distribution switch in case of a, a core switch okay so fine so a good network design always look for a redundancy in our devices and a network link network link is nothing but internet service provider redundancy is basically extra hardware software as a backup okay so hardware and software is nothing but when we have two boxes kept as a active and a standby so every time one box is your active and the second one is software uh, second one is acting as a standby so what basically happens in redundancy is your main hardware if the if the main hardware or software fails or a link fail okay or in case case of emergency your second or uh, second device which is acting as a standby will now be triggered or will be put up into active state and now all the traffic will be carry forwarded by this active boxes network redundancy is a process of adding or alternate instances redundancy can be achieved by failover load balancing and high availability again again that is something which i just discussed and the important term here is automatic way okay why do i say automatic way it's not that when something goes down a network engineer goes to the field engineer or a not uh, or a uh, network engineer get uh, notified over on a alerts saying something is down and then you fix the issue that is not redundancy okay redundancy should always be automatic and the key point here is the convergence time so let's say it takes 10 second to detect the issue and to fix the issue okay so let's say if a traffic was moving on from the active box and all of sudden this went down now how much time do you think the second box should take to start the traffic flow so basically that happens in 10 second of time so that is automatic okay it's automatic switch over and it should take the least time for convergence okay so the same thing high availability is a number of connected device processing and providing services regards to the event of failure down something which you can read this okay they are written in very simple words so each each uh, terms that we discussed here is been described here okay so you guys can 
go ahead and you guys can read it okay now regards to hsrp it's a cisco proprietary okay and vrrp on other side is open standard or i triple standard okay now i have some diagrams so yeah we also missed ether channel ether channel is also acting as a redundancy right and on a redundancy on what on your software level right so you you normally create the ether channels over on the software so that whenever whenever let's say if one link is down we still have the second link serving the traffic okay so this is also one type of redundancy now this is a redundant power supply or we also call it as hot swappable okay so it has two power supply unit and this will be part of your chassis okay so all your <clears throat> high end devices like nexus 9k 7k 5k or the asr boxes they will have soup engines they will have power supply unit and they will be in a hot swappable mode so let's say if one goes down we still have the second which will serve the purpose and now this can be just taken out taken uh, taken down and we can just plug the new one okay so this is a redundant in in terms of power supply so that is what i said anything starting from the access layer that from the computer point of view till your isp each and everything will be having a redundancy redundancy okay yes now regards to fault tolerance which i was talking about two isps two internet service provider so let's say if this is my office so as i told you let's have two service provider let's say this is at&t and this is vodafone and even if one goes down we have the other one still running so that's a fault tolerance now this is in terms of storage boxes okay i talked about raid so redundant array, array of independent disk so these are tapes which are plugged in a active standby role so let's say if let's say the work the, so this um, hello just to yeah just to add on those are hard disks raid is used for hard disk rather than tapes yeah okay so let's say this is a uh, storage unit or like uh, uh, it's a hard disk so basically this hard disk is set in a uh, role role of their like primary secondary so what happens if one goes down or one is corrupt so the second one which is acting as a backup will take up the uh, storage and it will store so why why do we use this in the production is let's say we have 10000 of devices okay so let's say these devices will have some running configuration so these running configuration let's say if they are on a daily basis are getting stored on some external disk okay on some external hard disk similar way you will have servers where you have applications running so they will be also getting backed up in and stored somewhere so in case of something going down we still have a backup with us and we can just bring it up whenever we need okay so that is why we also take the backup in the network uh, enterprises so the whole thing to show this diagram was to show the uh, to show it from the redundancy path okay fine so let's go to the next slide so this is again the same thing network uh, resiliency is a key component of network design so as i told you the redundancy can be over on a router or over on a switch so when we need to add something or when we need to have the redundancy for in the case of router we just add up multiple routers in the case of switches we just add up multiple switches okay 
So it's a first hop multi-layer switch and this is a first hop with routers. Okay. So these are directly connected to the WAN circuits and the, these are acting as a gateway for our end users. Okay, this is again something okay, again. which you can uh, go after the class. But just just if you scroll up onto the image, right? I just want to add on one okay. more point there. So here, like if you see on the left image, we can run HSRP between four and five also, and and uh, router two and router three also. So the first uh, HSRP would be for the switch redundancy, and the second. Uh, um, oh, which second HSRP between the routers will be used for the link redundancy. For example, now uh, for switch six, it should you know which switch is active, four or five. So it will send traffic to that. And for switches four and five, they should know which link I should forward the traffic to. Say if, say the 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 link B, which is shown as between switch six and five, and the five is active, the traffic will go to from six to four and five and then out to router three. So that path also can be taken or it can go to four and two also. So we can run multiple instances of HSRP in our um, environment, depending on the uh, design we put in. Okay, great. Okay. So the whole thing is that you can run multiple HSRP from point of the design. Okay. Yeah. Depending on where you want to keep your gateway, yeah. whether you want to keep your gateways at uh, switches or at the routers. Okay. Okay, just just a minute, guys. Okay, fine. Uh, fine. So that was regards to HS. Uh, that was regards to FHRP. Okay, and as I told you, we have three different protocols to achieve redundancy. So, in terms of uh, the usage, or in terms of the uh, the protocol, we we just have we just have this. So the first one here is a Cisco proprietary, which is used in a Cisco environment, this is a open standard. Both of them run specially over on a master and slave concept with no load balancing. So later on, what we did was we have also uh, another protocol that is the third protocol, which will provide us load balancing. Okay. So we can wisely make use of all the devices. So let me first go and start with uh, HSRP here. So let me tell you what, what are different types of HSRP. So as I told, it's a hot standby router protocol. There are two HSRP model. It's version one and second one is called version two. Okay. So version one is compatible with only IPv4. Whereas version two is compatible with IPv4 and IPv6. Okay, and the way they work, or the uh, the uh, I mean the way they get triggered up and the multicast address is different on both of them. Let's say on version one, so by default, this version one is enabled on the devices. Okay, we need to manually bring this up version two. So let's say vers uh, version one is by default and version two is has to be manually configured. Now what happens is we have two, let's say we have two gateway units and I have some IPs configured here like 1.1.1.1 and I have 1.1.1.2. Okay. So as soon as I enable the HSRP protocol here, they start 
triggering the HSRP packet. Okay, so the HSRP packets are being triggered. Now, where are these HSRP packet taken up? Okay, or where are these packets going? Or what are the content of these packet? So, for a version one, the packet will be looking for this multicast IP two two four zero dot zero dot two. And in the case of version one, it will be looking or listening across on this multicast IP. Okay, and how is this normally working, or how how does HSRP work? So in production, so let's say I have two switch, uh, two gateways, gateway two, and gateway one, connected to one switch. And now this switch is connected to one PC. and similar way this is also connected to second pc okay let's say the pc uh, or the computer has a ip address of 1.1.1.100 and the gateway gateway of a computer is very important so i'll just show you on my screen if if i go to my adapter there is something called gateway now that gateway is very important without gateway i i cannot go across anywhere so if you see i will have one ip address to my computer and the same time i will have some gateway okay so this gateway plays a important role to take the packets further so in this case see i can set ip address manually i can set the subnet similar way i need to also statically configure the gateway so without gateway my packet are not going anywhere okay so let's say in this particular design when when i have two gateways okay the two gateways are acting as a redundancy path okay so what is my pc1 gate a gateway going to be so let's give an ip here okay and as i as i told you as i showed just now there should be some gateway so now i am going to say 1.1.1.1 1 .1 .1 .1. so by default all traffic are going in this direction now if this goes down since i have still configured my gateway pointing to gateway number 1 all all the traffic are now getting dropped at this okay so what i am going to do is i am going to run the hsrp so when i run hsrp over here i make use of some virtual ips so let's say the virtual ip here is 254 okay now my gateways are not pointing either to dot 1 or either to dot 2 it will be pointing to 254 okay and my pc or my computer is not any more sending to the gateways it's it's sending to the virtual ip okay and this virtual ip is binded up with some mac address so in in case of hsrp we have some defined mac address so this is in case of version 1 okay in case of version 1 we have some set of defined so let's say it's this so this mac address will be binded up on this interface and this interface okay and now whenever the traffic let's say the traffic over here is down so this this mac address is still binded up with this and the traffic without any lag will take take this path okay so this is called redundancy in in terms of uh, the gateways okay now there is one more achievement of there is one more uh, redundancy checks that hsrp can do that is let's say from your isp point of view so this isp is connected to this and it's also connected to this switch now let's say everything is fine from uh, the lan point of view but over on the wan connection might be this link over here this switch port goes down for some reason okay and your traffic is still going on in this direction but this is down so now now it's going to create an outage okay so how can we rectify this issue we can still rectify the issue with 
एच एस आर पी ट्रैकिंग कॉन्सेप्ट सो इफ आई एनेबल एच एस आर पी ट्रैकिंग कॉन्सेप्ट इट्स गोइंग टू ट्रैक दिस इंटरफेस लेट से इफ द इंटरफेस इज डाउन देन इट्स गोइंग टू मार्क दिस एज स्टैंड बाई एंड इट्स गोइंग टू से दैट दिस स्विच इज एक्टिव नाउ ऑल योर ट्रैफिक विल स्टार्ट फ्लोइंग फ्रॉम दिस ओके सो लेट मी वन सेगेन clearly write it over here so let's say i have computers here okay let's say these are connected to isps so hsrp is enabled on this interface and on this interface okay and my gateways are now not pointing either to this or either to this it's pointing to the virtual ips virtual ip of hsrp so this virtual ip will be binded up with one mac address okay and that that is where your all mac address table on this particular switch are going to be associated with so this on this switch if if you ever open up this switch and if you see the mac address table you will see a new hsrp mac address which is Uh, taking care of the traffic okay so your your physical interface are not considered now it's more your logical interface that is binded up with these two devices so whatever data or whatever uh, ethernet frames received on this uh, switch switch is going to see uh, which is up okay so basically they have their own mechanism to check whether this is up or whether this is up okay so basis on that the switch will make the decision and it will send the traffic okay so this was in case of lan now similar way let's say everything is fine and your hsrp was sending uh, the packet to this the gateway number 1 but what if this interface was down for some reason this interface is down now that would be a glitch on hsrp right but the plus point of hsrp is you can still track this there there is a concept of tracking these interfaces okay so if this interface health checkup is down then basically your hsrp will make a decision not to send over here instead prefer the second route okay so we will do this over lab and it will be much more clear and regarding the theoretical topics uh, theoretical points it's uh, all mentioned here so there are two versions of hsrp uh there are two or more cisco router or switches which form the hsrp group so one becomes a active device which will serve the traffic the second one will become the standby okay it's it's always in a standby it they are not going to uh, forward any tr uh, traffic so how how is the decision making done so let's say when i have two gateways gateway number 2 and gateway number 1 and i have a computer so how is hsrp going to decide whether this will become master or this will become a active and this will become a standby in terms of hsrp okay so how how is this decision made so basically when you enable hsrp both of them will have a priority of 100 okay both are going to have priority of 100 now who will take the role of active so basically that is your highest interface ip so let's say the ip configured here was 1.1.1.1 and the ip configured here was 1.1.1.2 now priority is same what is the tie breaker highest interface ip so this will win the election so this will be the active in nature and this will be the standby in nature so your by default your traffic will go in this direction and if there is any uh, failover or any switch over or any flap uh, this will be put into uh, standby and then this direction will be adopted okay this is in case of when you have the same priority now these priority are customizable that means i can set a 
superiority of 150 manually. Now, in this case, my gateway number 1 will take the role of active and this will become a standby. Now, all the traffic will force to go via gateway number 1. Okay, So, that means we have option of something uh, default. Also, we can user configure something in the case of SSRP. Okay, So, that is what is documented here. So, by default, it is going to be 100, but you can play around with the priority. Okay, You can just increase or decrease them. So, how is the uh, master switch or a uh, master switch or uh, decision going to be between uh, when, when the priority is same? It is because of the highest interface IP. Okay. What is a pre attempts or preempts in case of HSRP? Let us say this is gateway number 2 and this is 1. Okay. Let us say this is now active box and this is standby box. Okay. My traffic were all going forward from this direction. Now, for some reason, this is down. So, HSRP started forwarding it in this direction. Okay. Now, the traffic is going in this direction. Now, in the same meanwhile, let us say this, this device comes up, which is, which was acting as active. Okay. Now, this comes up. Now, do you, do you think the traffic will be shifted back to this or the traffic will still be going across on this? Okay. Now, that depends on your preempts. Okay. If you have set the concept of preempts, this device is going to send a preempts request saying that I am a better gateway with a better priority. So, let us say this is a priority 150 and over here it is 100. Now, as soon as the preempts reaches to the standby, st standby is going to give back that role to the active box and the active once again be, uh, takes up the role of active and this becomes standby. Now, if there is no concept of preempts configured, now this will be acting as a active box and then the traffic will be still going. So, either you have to bring down this interface or this device should be put into down so that this device takes up that role. Okay. So, that is when we do not have preempts. But if you have preempts, it is automatic. It will take up the role once again from, from the standby point of view. As I told you, the packet flow, when you just enable HSRP version 1, it is going towards 2240.02 in case of version 1. In case of HSRP version 2, it is 2240.0.102. Very important from certification as well as from interview point of view. This is something where uh, the technical round you can expect the question. Okay, so that is where the hello traffic are being sent. Now, all the traffic, all this HSRP traffic by default are plain text. Whatever you are just sending across, they are plain text. But we can have MD5 configured. Okay, so with MD5, you can just encrypt all the HSRP traffic. Okay, now regards to the group. So, in a HSRP version 1, we have a group range from 0 to 255. Now, what is group? So, let's say if I have VLAN 1. Okay, now this will be your HSRP group 1. Let's say I have second VLAN, VLAN number 2. Now, I can have HSRP group 2. Now, why do I need this? Okay. So, let me draw the diagram. Okay. So, let us say I have a gateway 1 and I have gateway 2. Okay. And this particular device is connected to multiple subnets. So, let us say I have VLAN 1, I have VLAN 10, I have VLAN 20. Now, how is your HSRP going to be configured because every VLAN will have its own gateway. So, let us say VLAN 1 has a gateway of 192.168.1.1. 1. Similar way VLAN 10 
is going to have a gateway of 192, 168, 10.1. Okay, different networks. VLAN 20 will have 192, 168, 20.1, right? So basically this will hit on uh, this gateway. The second VLAN is going to hit on this and the third VLAN 20 are going to hit on different VLAN. So basically there are three networks, right? The, mo the every every VLAN will point to their own gateways. So from this point of view, where you need to configure your HSRP, you can configure HSRP for VLAN 1, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. So you can have multiple groups here like group 1, group 10, group 20. Okay. And each group can have their own set of priorities. So let's say for group 1, you have set some different priority and for group 2, you have set some different priority. Okay. So in terms of version 1, you can have a group in 0 to 255 range. Whereas if you have version 2, you can have the all extended range as well. Okay. 0 to 4. Uh, 4095 okay now regarding this mac address as as we know as soon as we enable hsrp okay as soon as i enable a virtual uh, ip it's going to bring up a mac address okay now on a gateway let's say two gateway if i have multiple vlan vlan 1 2 3 4 and so on now how is the MAC address be different for each one of them. Okay. So that's different because of these two values. Now these two values are nothing but they are the hexadecimal value. Okay. The hexadecimal value of the groups. So let's say if it's 1, the value would be 0, 1. Let's say if it was a 10, now the hexadecimal would have been uh, 0, A. Okay. So this MAC address will change. So that's how technically the packet, uh, the packet for a HSRP all gets triggered up and how the packets uh, flow between the two gateways. Okay. So MAC address is different for every group. So that is what is point. So it's not that one HSRP is going to take care of every VLANs. It's your HSRP where the groups will be created. So group one will take care of this, group two will take care of this, group three and so on. And they all will be listed under the HSRP. Okay. So that's in the case when you have multiple VLANs, you might have seen all the examples so far done just for one VLAN. Okay. Uh, all kind of lab or something done for one. But when you have multiple uh, VLANs or when you have multiple networks, so you must know there will be something called groups that gets mapped to these networks. Okay. And so on the MAC address will also differ from one network to one network. Fine. So what else here? So your HSRP, the HSRP one doesn't support IPv6, whereas your HSRP version 2 will support IPv6. Okay, and yes, version 1 and version 2 are not compatible with each other. Okay, so you just cannot have uh, mis mix, uh, uh, mix. Okay, so you, you just cannot have a network where some are running on version 1 and some others are running on 2. You must have a consistency here. And by default, we have learned HSRP always run on active and standby model. Okay. But yes, we can achieve some load sharing. I'm not talking about uh, the proper load balancing. Some kind of load sharing. That is, let's say if I have uh, VLAN 1, VLAN 10, where this gateway is acting as active. And for other VLANs, let's say 20 and 40, I can make this as a active. Now that kind of load sharing can be done on HSRP. Okay. But this is not very uh, high level of load balancing that we see in GLBP. So in GLBP, 
we will see the load balancing method like round robin weighted met method so that is more more in depth okay so these the load balancing happening in glbp is much more which we cannot achieve over on hsrp hsrp we can just try to segregate the traffic so we can put the 10 and 1 traffic on the first box okay and the the next couple of traffic on the second box so that so that at least both of the device get uh, some some traffic they 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 work all all the time okay and what about the timers here okay so what is a hello timer what is a dead timer so basically it's three second and a 10 second here for hsrp version one and hsrp version two okay so your one and version two are going to have three seconds of hello timer and 10 second for your dead timer so what is dead timer so let's say if i have so let's say i have two gateway gateway one and gateway two okay so the hello timer is nothing but every three seconds the hello packets are sent and let's say if one device doesn't reply for next 10 seconds then that's going to be called as a hold timer or dead timer and then whatever role let's say this was a active box now this will be put into standby and automatically the role of active will be given to the second box okay so the time taken for your hsrp convergence from a uh, failed device to another device so basically your traffic which was stuck for 10 seconds so at the most your traffic will be stuck for 10 seconds and then the traffic will start flowing in this direction so 10 second is okay when compared to three minutes four minutes or five minutes okay so 10 second can be negligible in some some cases not every time because 10 10 second is also very critical when we have very sensitive monitoring tools or uh, sorts of networking uh, technology in the enterprises okay so 10 second is too much even your one second can bring outage when you have a monitoring tools and all which where the monitoring poles every one second okay but fine uh, to some extent 10 second is much better when compared to five minutes of outage or five uh, three minutes of outage this this are okay okay by default version 1 is enabled your hsrp version 1 is enabled and then we need to enable version 2 and by default all the devices all these gateways where we enable the hsrp they have a predefined priority of 100 okay so the highest priority win the election so the highest priority so in this case there is tiebreaker now they both have same priority now it's your highest IP address that's been assigned. So let's say if you assigned uh, 192, 168, 1.2 here and you assigned 192, 168, 1.1. .1. So which is highest now? This is highest. So the traffic will go in this direction. Okay. Well, so that we can see also during the lab as well. So HSRP does not support preempt okay fine one more thing uh, your hsrp in the case of hsrp the preempts okay they have to be manually enabled by def by manually we have to enable the preempts uh, rule otherwise as as you know if let's say this was active So let's say this was active for some reason now this becomes active and the traffic is going from this direction now let's say this comes back okay this comes back but this is going to still take the active uh, role okay it's not going to send back the role so to have that we need to configure preempts so once you have preempts let's say uh, this comes up 
it's going to notify this box that I am up and I can have the roll back. And now this this one has to let that go. And then, then this will become active once again. And this is going to put back to standby. Okay. So that's how it works in case of pre -air. Fine. Now, few states in HSRP. Because when we talk about protocols, when we talk about uh, networking, each protocol have certain steps of working, right? When we discussed about its HTTP or DTP or Ether channels, uh, you, even you, even in the future when we talk about BGP or uh, OSPF, each protocol will have some certain states, certain timers, certain IP address or multicast ad, uh, address that makes this initial uh, neighborship okay basically for your initial neighborship we need uh, some mechanism or some inbuilt mechanism within that okay and every every uh, uh, let's say let's say when i have two gateways when when they are in the phase of discussion of active to standby they straight away don't become active and standby Okay, they first send a hello packet saying I am a hello packet and I am going to be the active. Similar way, this person is going to send a hello packet with saying I have uh, so and so priority with me and I am going to declare myself as active. Okay, now those are done in states, different states and that those states are being listed. So first it's initial state. As soon as you just bring up the HSRP up, they are called as in initial state, okay. In the listen state, the device are going to have their virtual IP configured. So let's say this has a virtual IP configured and also this device have some virtual IP configured, okay. And they will listen for hello messages and both of them are waiting for a hello messages to be received. In the third state the speak state router will send the hello message and join the election okay and then they will either become active or they will either become standby so that is your last step so once as i told you once the hello packet are sent they themselves declare as to be a as a active box okay later on when it reaches in uh, on these boxes then they compare what is the priority now what is the tiebreaker and then they fall into standby and active criteria okay so these are the steps that happen in the hsrp active standby election so this is in case of hsrp now when we go to vrrp i'll tell you the different things here okay so in vrrp they are different okay it's in it active and backup only three steps in vrrp so that is what my point was every protocol has its way its own way of working and forming a neighborship to uh, give us the desired result okay so in this case it's these five steps initial listen speak standby active okay so these are few diagrams once again to support what is happening so basically they are going to send their own hello packets with the priority sets and then these are the states and then they will decide who have to be active and which of the gateway falls back to standby okay that's in case of hsrp group one now in this case in this diagram i just want to show you the path of the packet okay so let's say these are access layer okay these are access layer you have the distribution layer or we can call it as a uh, uh, core and distribution collapsed layer so from this switch uh, this pc point of view 
let's say this has taken up the hsrp active role okay and this is going to be idle so your traffic is moving on in this direction okay now in case of any outage so let's say there was some outage happening here okay let's say something some outage happened over here it takes three, uh, 10 seconds for the convergence and automatically this is going to become active so in this case the timers plays an important role it's 3 second for your hello packet so every 3 second hello packet will be sent and on the 10th second it's going to make the decision that this is no longer be active i have to put this and then the traffic will go in this direction so this is what happens okay and this is once again put back to the init state and then now let's say uh, this this comes back okay this comes back so it has to go back to the same state from init to speak uh, all those steps all the states that we discussed here init speak init listen speak standby and active okay so this is a uh, chart to show the difference between two of them so we already discussed this and uh, this is a hexa value for the group number okay and what is a group number group number is associated with the vlan okay this is a configuration part and configuration part we will verify and the hsrp object tracking which is nothing but from the van side of point okay so let's say if this is continuously sending from this uh, from this direction instead of this okay instead of r1 so let's say it's going via r2 but at this moment the outage is on this layer okay or what you say on the van side so we can enable hsrp tracking so in case if this is down for some reason it take it it still uh, changes it it still change the role and and now it becomes a active and this will be put up into uh, standby now the traffic will be in this direction so that is a main two things that we can achieve here okay so before going to vrrp let's do the lab and then we will move on to vrrp okay so for now for uh, for the hsrp configuration i have taken this portion of the topology okay so that is the, let me just point it so we we were all were here now now we just moved out from that and we took a new section okay so let me tell you what is what here Okay, so let me start this GNS.
Shagar, I have a question for you. Yes. So uh, let's see if I enable uh, HSRP on core layer. Yes. You said uh, prior if if prior, priority is same. Yes. So you said the uh, highest IP address will take uh, you know stand uh, kind of what do you call it, active. Okay. So uh, for my question is if it's um, if uplinks, let's say if it's going to the connected to internet, so the land land connection. So let's say if the land connection IP address is IR, uh, if it's the uplink to ISP, so how it works? I, do, I have a kind of, kind of confusion right now. So which one will, it will take? Which path it will take? So so for ex so I'm connect. Yeah. So from from this. Uh network topology point of view so let's say this is one router or gateway moscow r19 and i have moscow r20 okay and if you say one of the link which connects to the isp is down so yeah hsrp is going to track this interfaces and basis on that the uh, the active to standby and standby to active will be triggered so is that your question? Hello. Sorry, my question is: uh, You said the highest IP address will take, uh, you know, active role. Okay. So uh, you enable on the LAN side. Okay. If you enable on LAN side, so that highest IP address will take active. Okay. That's uh, core uh, core router will take active. Okay. So what, what happened to that? Uh, you know the uplinks. That means it's connecting to the WAN connections, the IP address. So how do you how do you perform that uh, scenario? So are you referring to the case where where we discussed that we can run two HSRP instances, one between the routers and one between the switches? Is that the question? Yeah, um, uh, yeah. If I, yeah, if I connect that, uh, yeah. Yeah. So now, okay. So now, if you see the first HSRP instance, which is running between the switches, right? In this example, the purple, right? The Moscow example, the HSRP yeah, Moscow, so you will. Let me, let me, uh, let me tell me my question is okay. So um, okay. the land connection. If I, if I enable uh, HSRP and if it port, uh, post the uh, IS IP address you said IS IP address will be you know, active. So okay. the land side. I'm talking about the land side. Right. Okay. okay. So what happened? What happened about the uh, you know the interface that is facing outside? That means to IS. So so now now if you see the the HSRP is running between switch zero one and switch zero two for the land side. Okay, the PC twelve right. PC12, the default gateway is residing on um, uh, the switch one or switch two. Okay, the now this will take it. So the WAN side, the HSRP is running between uh, the router 19 and router 20, right? So now whatever the active um, um, election HSRP happens between uh, router 19 and router 20. So your first hop for the first hop redundancy from PC12. HSRP active will be chosen between switch one and switch two based on highest IP address or the priority. So now for the next hop between router 19 and router 20, the HSRP active will be chosen between these two based on uh, again the priority or the IP address. Not on the interface of the, uh, not on the gig zero by one and zero by one on switch one and switch two. Does that help? Yeah, uh, uh, let's do when we're doing a practical week, I can understand, I think. Okay, okay. so uh, I, I want to have one uh, more question. So is that your question or are you saying uh, or are you saying that if uh, this core router is connected to another ISP something? No, my question is, uh, if anything happened to the core router, so let's see the active, uh, you said that uh, if the priority is same, okay. so highest IP will take, you know, uh, you know, the active. Okay. 
So uh, in that case, uh, you know, outside, you know, the outside that core outer is facing to ISP, it has more, uh, the second one that standby as uh, okay. more highest IP. Okay. What happened? That is my question. So, see, okay. Uh, okay. See, your active and your standby is on a complete box, okay? So, when this is active, so that active is for this as well as for this, okay? So, if oh, yeah, okay. if any traffic is coming to this, your switch is forwarding here and then it's forwarding here. Now, for some reason, HSRP detects this is down. That That's enough for the change, the for the election to get uh, reintroduced and then this becomes active. So, when once it is active, that is accountable for the LAN point and from the WAN point as well. So, in this case, it will be sent here, that will be sent to this and then this router which is active will take care of. Now it's clear. Okay. okay. I got it. Thank you. Yeah. Now it's clear. Okay. Okay. So, let me first uh, explain this um, scenario. So, in this, uh, these are the different users. So, let's say I have VLAN 1 here and uh, VLAN 1 put up here then VLAN 40 and VLAN 40 and they are connected to this access point. So, I don't need to uh, access switches here because I'm not going to put any HSRP at, at this moment on this boxes, okay. Uh, since they were already being created, I'm just using them, okay. And in, in, in between them, I'm going to use a trunking port. And over here, I'm again going to make use of a trunk. This is going to be a trunk. And over here, as you know, the concept of inter VLAN, uh, what you call a stick con router, where I created sub interfaces. So, the first sub interfaces will be encapsulating VLAN 1, the second sub interface will be encapsulating VLAN 20 data. So, over here, we will see dot uh 0 0.0.1 and uh, 0 0.0.40 okay so this is how this whole uh, configuration is so when once you go go back to the workbook you will be uh, you can yourself practice it okay i just demonstrated so that before telling you the initial conf then might be i uh, you will not understand what is hsrp okay so this is a basic uh, thing which i have done and from the uh, from the uh, from the PC point of view, first thing I will show you is the normal behavior. That is, these this is an IP address of this. Now, what is the gateway that I'm going to set? So I'm going to set a gateway uh, on on this VLANs. Okay, so so I have written here. So this is my gateway for VLAN one, and this is my gateway for VLAN forty. So VLAN one will have a gateway pointing to this. So on this computer so let me show you what i'm trying to say so i'll go to right click i'll edit this is a linux based uh, docker which is only uh, available on gns okay so these are few things which you will not see on evng so let me show you what what which kind of docker i'm using might be they uh, might be evng pro has this but community version will not have okay so these are Alpine Linux Docker, which will work as your VPCS instances. Okay. Only, only the plus point about these are it the IPs will be uh, saved from one lab to next lab. Whereas in your VPCS, that is these ones, uh, they will lose their configuration every time. Okay. Well, so let's come out of all that thing. So let's say I have configured IP address to this computer class C IP address and the gateway, I'm going to give the gateway of the first uh, router or, or the first this one. Okay. So this computer user has a gateway of this to reach internet. Okay. I'll try to ping 8.8.8. .8 so let's do that first. So let's uh, power it on.
and uh, if you're wondering how how i'm able to reach 8.8.1 that's because uh, on a uplink side i have made made use of a nat adapter okay i'm running a nat adapter that's nothing but from the available list i just took one of the nat adapter okay i placed it on my topology and i just changed the icon so you can get any number of icons from internet so i just had one icon and i just uh, placed it okay just to make the topology look better so nothing nothing technical once again it's all the default thing and i just running this okay so by default i must get one ip from the nat adapter on my uh, so one one of the ip here will be from the nat adapter okay and then it's all your access access port trunk port once again trunk port okay and that's how we have it reachability to this so all my goal is to send a ping packet to the gateway and the gateway will take care of internet okay so let's go to the console of computer 10 what is the ip of this it's uh, 172.16.10.10 let's try to ping 8.8.8 .8 and i have a reachability to internet okay now let's keep this going let's keep this going and let me also parallelly take the console of this router and on a router let's talk about this interface what if this interface somehow is stopped now, as soon as this gets stopped, your packet, which was mo moving in this direction, will also get stopped. And all your reachability, that is your user 10 to internet will be lost. Okay. So, I'll show you by doing uh, the interface shutdown. So, let's do E0 slash 1 and put it under shut. Okay. So, if I do this, yes, I lost the internet reachability. Okay. Very expected behavior. And now this is somewhere where I want to introduce HSRP. I will change the gateway of this computer. They will no longer be pointing to any physical interfaces. Instead, they will be pointing to a logical uh, or a virtual IPs. Okay. Once you have the virtual IPs created on a device, on a backend, they are going to create a virtual MAC address. That is a nothing but HSRP MAC address. And that is how your bindings happen. Every time if they, they detect some kind of outage, the switch which has a MAC address binded with both the switches will know whom to send in, in the case of outage. And that's how your redundancy will come into picture. So as of now, if you see from, uh, if you see this from a switch point of view, the MAC address association, you will see the MAC address. Let's say you will see one MAC address associated with this another MAC address of this interface associated with this. Okay. And that's how your traffic is moving across. Now we will eliminate all this physical involvement. Okay. Instead of physical, we will bring a logical or a virtual IP. Now this virtual IP uh, is something which is configured under this interface, also under this interface, the same IPs. Okay these ips will create a hsrp mac address which will be placed here okay now the binding will be happening with this not with the physical uh, interfaces i'll just show you how as of now before starting the hsrp so let's see the mac address so from this point of view very simple mac address table uh, on 0 slash 3 i have the computer 10 on 0 slash 0 i have two mac address okay one one is a mac address from the switch and might be one from some one from some other device might be uh, the router or from the computer okay and on the 0 slash 1 i have this interface associated so if i want to see the physical I, uh, mac address of that so let's see show ip int 
zero slash one. Okay, so it's disabled. So I'll just bring it up. Okay, so if you see this, this is the MAC address, which is nothing but the MAC address of a physical interface of the router. Okay, so whatever MAC address is associated here, that's in the MAC address table of your switch. Okay, that is the binding happening without HSRP. Now we need to take that default behavior, and now the binding must happen on the MAC address that get generated when you run hsrp okay so these are few things which you should know from the packet level uh, because configuring hsrp is very simple but what is the back back end of this how is the packet flow associated that's more important okay so i'll enable debugs on this uh, routers let's say i run uh, debug standby events okay and on the switch everything is set up like uh, i have the access layers uh, and the trunk layer i just allowed 1 and 40 and on an access layer i have uh, just uh, added up the vlans okay it's on vlan 1 so by default it's running up vlan 1 if you see giga ethernet 0 slash 2 i have the second vlan 40 now let's configure hsrp straight away Okay, I, I will show you the interface that I have on the router. Okay, so looks like, okay, this is the router, right? Show IP int brief. So I have one interface or sub interface. This is a gateway for VLAN 1. This is a gateway for VLAN uh, 40. This is a outgoing interface, WAN interface, okay? The Vodafone connection. Now what I'll do is I'll go to this interface and I'll enable HSRP. Similar way, I will go to this interface and I'll enable HSRP. That is what I told you. HSRP will be enabled on every networks. Okay. So every network will have its group associated. Now, now you will see the group coming up and getting associated with this. One more group coming and associated with this. Okay. So let's go to conf t. Let's go to interface E0. 1.1 1 .1, right that is my first interface 1.1 1 .1. let's define the standby ips here so let's say standby it, it will ask me for some uh, group number so as you know your hsrp version 1 will support in this range so i'm going to pick one and i'm going to give a virtual ip I'm going to set some virtual IP. It can be any IP which, which has to be made use of in both the router, router 19 and router 20. So let's give an IP which is already mentioned over here. So this is for VLAN 1. Okay. See what happened. As soon as you enabled something, as soon as you enabled uh, HSRP, you can see the events happening over here. So let me tell you what, what exactly happened. So you have your MAC address getting generated. Your MAC address has been generated. Okay. The elections are been happening. So let's see what, what, what is the role of this router. So as of now, this, this has become active. Okay. This has become active and there is no information of the second router yet it's unknown this is active this is on priority one and it will have a group name this is a group name okay so let's go and configure the similar configuration on router 2 so by default if you by default if you if you see now from the theoretical point of view who will be acting as a active this will acting this will start the active role the reason is because of highest ip address because the priority is same i, I have not changed the priority yet so your dot 2 should win the election 
So let's see whether that happens or not. I'll go to interface E01.0. Okay, it's 1.1. And the standby is 1. IP address is again mentioned here. Okay, so now let's see what has happened. Okay, now 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 they will exchange the hello packets and they they will form the neighborship. See this this they are going in their HSRP state. In it speak and listen. Uh, in it listen speak. Then they declare themselves as standby or active okay so let's see who has taken up the election or who has won the election this has taken standby and the second router okay this has taken active and this has taken standby okay even even though this the even though this router has a better IP address. The only reason is the preempts, the preempts are by default not configured. Okay. And there is no way this router can take back the role of active. Okay. So we know this router should have been active, but this is not in the, in this case because your R19, we, we configured the HSRP on R19 and it has taken the active role. Okay. And since there is no preempts, it's not going to uh, give back that role so i i will just change or i'll configure the preempts okay so let's go here and let's say standby one preempts Okay, so let me try preempts here. Okay, so let me give a try with bouncing the port. Okay, so now it has taken the active local state and this will be put up on a standby. Okay. It's not the issue short and short the port that means PM didn't work. Is that correct? Yeah, there might be some uh, bug or something. Normally preempts are to happen without bouncing. Let me check the priority of this. Might be uh, there's something. So this is default and okay. So basically, looks like the preempt command didn't work. So we can see this in the flow. Okay, we can we can do it uh, now and we can check. So what I'm going to do now is from our first scenario, I I'm going to change the gateway of this device. Okay. Now, once HSRP is up, you don't need to point it to the physical interface. Now, you need to point this to HSRP IP, the virtual IP. And just close this once. And bring it up. So that's how this docker work so you do you do any changes you need to once close and once uh, once again start this
Okay, let's give it try 8.8.8. .8 it's working. On which path is it working? That is important. So let's say trace route. Okay, it's taking up 10.2 path. That is nothing but this. The reason is this is acting as a active device. Okay. So when I do a trace route from this, it the traffic is flowing over in this direction. The reason is this is active. So I'll shut down this. So once I shut down, let's see what happens. Okay. So I'll go to conf t interface e01.1 and let's shut down let's ping once again it's running so that means it's going somewhere from somewhere right so let's see which hop it takes so it started taking 10.1 that's nothing but this direction okay now this is a role of hsrp in in your previous scenario when you were pointing the gateway to the physical interface and if let's say the box goes down, your traffic is still being sent to that. Okay. There is nothing called redundancy or switch over here. Now, as soon as you introduced HSRP concept, you are going to change the gateway to this logical IP address. This IP address is going to create the logical MAC address, which is called as HSRP MAC address. And that is how the MAC address is binded with both the interface. Now, it goes to the HSRP MAC address. The MAC address binding will say that this, uh, since this is down, I need to send across to this. So let's see the binding on the switch layer. So from the switch layer, if you do see show MAC address, so this is the newly introduced MAC address. Okay. So this MAC address AC01 is learnt on this on this interface we also have the actual mac address of this interface still binded up okay but the traffic is now going over on this so on the mac address here you will see the traffic binded up with this interface and if you see the next device that is switch number two show MAC address. So you see the MAC address over here is binded with one zero. Uh, it's binded to this interface. And, and this has been put down. Okay. So that's how the MAC address of both the HSRP are pointing in this scenario when, when, when you just manually bought this down. So let's bring up and also let's see the preempt of uh, function so what is preempt as soon as i bring up the active router it must take back the role okay so i go to this interface i'll make it as no shutdown let's see do we have a reachability still yes we do have on which direction is it going is it on r19 or r20 Okay, so it shows it's still going on R1. Okay, so that means the preempts have not worked. Let me quickly check why why the preempts are not taken up. Okay, so this falls under standby. Let me see the configuration. Okay, so preempts are not working because the priorities are not set up. Okay, so I need to set the priority so that the preempt fall back on that. Okay, as of now, both are 100. 
so the preempt is not being functional so let me go to this interface 1.1 1 .1, and let's set the priority to like 150 and now the preempt should work and now it worked okay so for the preempt the priority is a dependency so you set priority you will see the uh, preempt start working and now this becomes active and uh, this becomes standby and from the trace root point of view let's see which path it takes okay so it started taking the r20 path So now, now it's taking up this path. Okay, as soon as this router came up with the better priority, the preempts triggered the election and the role was sent back to this, and the traffic is once again here. And let's see from the switch MAC address point of view. So now this switch is pointing the MAC address over on this interface okay and what about the second switch and on the second switch it's pointing towards 0 slash 1 now what is that interface so that interface is this so your direction your your direction is of course will take this because when when you are sending a ping or a trace route your switch is telling go over on this direction okay and that is how your hsrp on backend is technically working so you you can you you just need to know how the packet flow works for a hsrp okay just creating logical ip is not something it's uh, done in the background in the background it's also creating a mac address and the mac address is then associating with this logical ip and that's reason for your uh, flow of the packets okay now, as we know, HSRP is not about uh, about the LAN tracking. It can also do the work. It can also do the job across on the WAN side. Okay. So let's say in case uh, this is the path as of now, and for some reason this is down. This this switch port is down. So your packet would have been still been sent, right? But that is not going to happen, okay? Because HSRP is capable of tracking this. As soon as it see this is a uh, flap, your packet will be sent on this direction. So let's do that. To do that, we need to enable some trackings, okay? So I'll go to the router 20 first. And from router 20 point of view, let's enable some uh, tracking. So it's called as track. Let's give some tracking number or a uh, tracking object. Okay, object number. And from this, let's define the interface that I want to track. So I want to track E0 slash 2. Okay. And on what basis do you want to track? On the basis of the line protocol. As of now, it will be up and up. So let me show you that do ip interface so it's up and up okay as soon as this interface goes down that's enough for our hsrp to get triggered up and do the election okay let's define uh, this with the hsrp we need to map this okay so i'll go back to the interface e0 1.1 1 .1. and over here i am going to say standby 1 should track object id 15 and what is the decrement value now this is something which is important and it's little bit on the mathematical side okay so on on this router you know the default priority is 100 and on this the default priority we set is 50 okay so you need to decrement with some number so that the priority becomes lower than this and the, that leads to the election. If you just decrement by 10, that's going to be 140. It's again higher than that. So there will be no election. 
So you need to decrease by at least 60. So the periodicity of this gets to 90. So that is the whole intention of adding up this. So as soon as the interface goes down, it's going to decrease the periodicity by so and so number, which will be lesser than this. The preempts, what we configured preempts, will start the election. Okay. And that's how we will see the new active router coming up. So let's say we have decrement by 60. Well, so we did enough thing. Now, now time to test this. Okay. And how is the packet going? Let's once again check before doing any uh, changes. So it, it is taking R20. Okay. It's taking R20. That's over here. Now I'll, now I'll put this under shutdown mode. So I'll go to interf uh, interface of R20, 0 slash 2, and let me put it down as shutdown. Okay. As soon as you put that, your tracking object ID was triggered. It said the interface has gone to down and your election have started here. Okay. It went from active to speak. So from active to speak and speak to standby. Okay. And automatically the second router became active. So let's see uh, the configuration of or the status of this. So if you see here, let's see show standby brief and now it's active and let's see the traffic flow now. So it should point to R19, right? This is a R19 IP. So as soon as, as soon as the WAN link got flapped, your, the active box got triggered up. Okay. So this is answer for your question that you were asking when, when the WAN circuit goes down, how is your HSRP gonna track, right? So we need to enable the tracking feature. Once the tracking features uh, determine that this interface has gone down, so the HSRP election will re-happen and then this will be put up. Okay. So let's see from the point of priority. Let's see what happened here. So let's see show standby brief. Okay. So this is a router where I'm running this show standby brief. And you see the priority is 90. Why is it 90? Because I put the tracking rule with decrement of 60. So 150 minus 60 becomes 90. And that's lesser than your R19 router. If you don't take care of this, the election or the re-election will not happen. Okay. Fine. So this was about HSRP. The, uh, so any doubt over here? Hello. Hello. Yes, tell me. Where was it? Um, uh, go to PC10. When you are doing trace route, it looks like. Um, okay. It only managed to go up to 10.1. Okay, so that's uh, okay. So let's see if we have reachability. Okay, because we lost the uh, internet connection as of now. So let's see. So on R19, let's see what what is the status. Okay, so this is well good enough. And what is the status of E02? And do we have a IP address over there? Okay. 
so so that that is not related to hsrp might be my own gns lost uh, connection or something like that or or a routing issue or something the main intention was to on which router it's leading us okay yeah yeah because this is a lab environment so you know every time some some nat adapter will give some issue or something but yeah uh, uh, so that should be some something over here so let me quickly check that there is no issue from my side let's ping out from here okay so we have the reachability so it's all about uh, the internal setup here might be some gateway is not set or okay now it came up now if i run trace route so it's going to 10.1 and it went to 32 now it's going to cloud okay so 32.2 is nothing but my uh, internal adapter so from there there it's trying to reach so basically trace route works on different uh, uh, method and ping works on different method so you can see the ping is working okay since we are this is a lab practice lab environment so the main thing that i need to focus is on which gateway it's leading me on on the case of any outage or a serial link tracking okay fine so i'll quickly do one more thing one more configuration that is for two different computers okay and uh, the requirement of or, or or my goal of this lab would lab would be to load share okay that means by default this will be taken up this part because of the highest uh, uh ip address and also and so okay now let's say how if i configure vlan 40 but i want uh, and once you configure uh, vlan 40 that's again going to take this because of that highest ip but let's make uh vlan 40 to consider this path like a load sharing so for vlan 40 it will be this and for vlan uh, 1 this is going to be the path and we can set active and uh, standby okay so for vlan 40 this will be active and this will be standby and for vlan one point of view this was active and this was standby so let's do that and uh, we can wind up then okay so let's go to router 19 so i have configured for 1.1 Now let's configure one more sub interface that is interface e zero one dot forty. I have configured the IP addresses already. Uh, so let's show. Let me show you. So this is what I have done the configuration. Now let's configure the HSRP. So HSRP forty. So forty is nothing but uh, the object group number. Let's give a IP address, logical IP address that is now forty dot two fifty four. Standby forty preempts. Standby forty priority one fifty because I want manually this router be to be the active. By default, this will not take up because of uh, the theoretical which we learned when both are. Hundred, hundred. The highest interface will take up. So by default, the R twenty would have taken. We know that. So I I will not waste lot of time here. So I'll straight away set up priority one fifty on M nineteen uh, on router nineteen. Now let's go to this interface interface of R twenty or Moscow router twenty, and let's set Z one dot fifty standby forty IP address of. Uh, this let's copy this okay fine uh, priority is not required here preempts i don't want here okay uh, because preempt to be configured on a active box 
so let's uh, check the behavior now so let's see show standby i can see two groups one is group number 1 and group number 40 and for group number 40 this is active and uh, this is active might be okay why is it active let's see that okay because the priority has uh, gone down it it decremented this okay so let's bring up the interface which is shut i'll make it no shut and let's see if the reelection happens so the tracking object has detected up line protocol the reelection triggered the up and vlan 1 should be active here yes it is active here but group 40 is going to be standby on this router because we have set a uh, better priority on the second box okay so the priority by default is 100 here and over here i have set 150 so by doing this my both the router will be forwarding the traffic so my r19 is going to take the take care of traffic of vlan 40 and my r20 is going to take the uh, traffic of vlan 1 okay so this way we are load sharing and let's do the test by changing the config here fine this is set accordingly so this is the virtual ip and if i open up this device pc9 let's do a trace route 8.8.8 so it's leading to 40.1 okay that's that's the right device let's say if i bring bring that interface down okay from the from the switch point of view so let's see the mac address table and there is some something interesting fact also okay so let's say when i had the mac address table uh, for uh, automatically generated for vlan 1 this was the mac address now for uh, 40 vlan the mac address is going to be this one what is the catch here what is what is the format of hsrp mac address this is the hsrp mac address the last two bit here is in a hexadecimal what is vlan 1 it's nothing but 1 and what is the hexa value of 1 it's going to be 1 that is why it, it created a hexa value of 0 1 but in the case of vlan 40 what is the value here what is the decimal value 40 and what is the hexa value of 40 it's 28 so i can show you that quickly and that's how your mac address get created up okay so let's do hexa hexa for decimal 40 so that's nothing but 28 and that's how your mac address also gets created accordingly so you have 10 vlans you will have 10 mac address and the mac address is what is switching your traffic right so as of now this is switching towards 0.1 which is uh, leading to r19 moscow r19 because that's a active uh, router okay from a uh, pc9 9 uh, if if i do a trace route it's taking to r19 but yes for some reason if this goes down the interface goes down let me put it as shut uh now do i have a reachability or what is the path now so basically it should take towards moscow r20 the second router okay so it started taking up to the 40.2 so that's a behavior of mac uh, that's a behavior of hsrp the hsrp states uh, the logical ip addresses uh, the mac address behind them the serial interface tracking okay so what else do you, do you have any uh, question here 
something which you wanted to know and yeah one more thing which i told uh, you was about the authentication it, it's simple thing you just can uh, introduce the authentication okay so you can set the md5 or you can set a uh, plain text so both are supported but if you are setting up authentic authentication make sure all the devices have uh, them set up okay okay let me show quickly the packet uh, trace the wireshark capture so let me filter out for hsrp so from hsrp by default it's running on version 2 version 2 have a mac address uh, uh the multicast address on 224.0.0.2 it's ipv4 and uh, let me show you the hsrp mac address so this is a mac address okay which which where your hello packets are listening and this is the mac address that is getting associated with that logical ip so there are two things once you enable hsrp the neighbors need to go to the rightful device okay what is what is the role of multicast so let's say when i have multiple devices okay let's say i have hsrp over here i have hsrp here let's say i do not have hsrp here so multicast will form the neighborship only on this pair because the multicast mac address will be listening okay so when a packet hello packet is been sent to the router 2 so they, it will contain some multicast address so that multicast address will be over listening here so multicast is nothing but it see let 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 me give you this example so let's say this is a sender so sender is going to send the multicast address to only group of devices which are running on the same protocol so they are running on hsrp then only they are going to form a neighborship okay it's not a broadcast broadcast will send to everything okay unicast is one to one if i know the ip address of this person i will straight away send a packet multicast i do not know the ip address but i am sending up to a group of people who are belonging to my protocol the protocol that i am running okay so for that your hello packet will contain your multicast ip and all other details that's what is shown here the source ip will be shown here this is your hsrp this is your multicast address of your version 1 then we see on a uh, la uh, network layer or layer 3 we can see it's a udp packet this is a multicast address where where the packets are listening this is a port number very important okay this is something which is something out of the box 1985 and little uh, confusing in case to remember so you need to remember the port number okay the udp port number for hsrp version 1 is 1985 And what else do we see here? Cisco hot standby router protocol. So we have all the priority value, group value, the virtual IPs. Okay. So th this is about the virtual or, or this is about the group one. So I let me see if hey, Sagar, why does it say version 0 under hsrp cisco hsrp okay so basically that is a version code okay so that's a version code for your version 1 which only support ipv4 sometimes this uh, version will be in a hexadecimal so it looks little uh, weird uh, on a wireshark and on a uh, live box they, they don't will be, uh, won't be a, a unique thing sometimes in a hexa and on a box it will be a decimal notation okay 
So this is for VLAN 40, group 40, okay. So do we have for VLAN 1, so for VLAN 1, so if you see there is no tagging happening because by default your native is on VLAN 1, okay. We have group 1, all those things. Okay, and uh, how how do we convert this to version two? It's uh, pretty simple. We can just change it from. Let's do it from here. Standby. Okay. Interface E one one dot forty. Standby one. Do we have version? Okay, we have version over here, standby version and we can just make it 2, okay. So this has gone to init state. Don't you need the other side as version 2? Yeah, yeah. It, it is required and second thing is uh, they are not backward compatibility. So we need to do a uh, configuration change. So I, I was thinking of doing in the next class because we are already uh, very late. Just, just wanted to wind up. Okay, so we will do this version 2 in the next class and along with this we will do the VRRP. Again in the VRRP there are two uh, versions. Okay, so is there any doubt before I wind up in this class? No. So all is fine. This is something which uh, we have already uh, read in CCNA level also, right? Okay, fine guys. So I'll take it as no from everyone. So we are good to wind up. Uh, so yeah, do you, okay, there are few chats. By the way, do you guys need class tomorrow or should we meet on Monday? What do you think? Yeah, let's come on Monday. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, so we have not changed any password for the portal. Okay, so this password was given for the topology to be downloaded or the workbook to be downloaded. But you guys already have the workbook on the portal with the same old password. Okay, so you can ignore that request. Uh, okay, let me show you once again what I'm trying to say. So what I did was I parallelly made one more page dedicated for workbook so for that i have given you this but in case you already have the access to the course then you don't have to worry okay because after all i'm going to put all the workbook all the videos uh, straight away on on that uh, portal itself so whatever uh, whatever you download whatever you see over here is the final one but what i did was i created one more uh, link for the workbook so might be that is why you got a uh, little confused okay so the only change here is <coughs> i i i just took down some interfaces so that I could make the HSRP. But yeah, I, I can give you uh, this topology once again. Uh, 
okay so i'll give you this topology uh, over on the whatsapp i'll just paste it okay fine guys so let's meet up on the monday that's what you guys decided right monday right yes okay fine so let's meet up on the monday with new topics and we will try to cover up a lot of things in the coming week okay see you and have a nice uh, weekend everyone you too okay you as well thank you okay, bye